Welcome to a Buckeye Insider Special alongside Mike Miller. I'm Mark Coons as we're back for another year covering Ohio State football. And Mike, it is gearing up to be another special year for the defending national champions. It's interesting, you look back the last couple times Ohio State won a national championship, 1968, 2002. They were both relatively young teams. They came back the next year, the overwhelming favorites to repeat as champions, much like they're doing here in 2015. Yet in 1969 and 2003, they didn't quite repeat. So how will this year be different for Ohio State? Well, you're right, Mark. They didn't quite repeat, although the 1969 team was one win away from repeating, and, and the 2003 team was one win away from getting to the national championship. So uh, let's put that into proper context. It wasn't a complete collapse. But I think what's interesting about this team, it's the first time we've seen it with Urban and Meyer and his cast of characters that have taken over now entering their fourth year here at Ohio State. I sense a quiet confidence and I also sense the one game at a time. Think how successful the Buckeyes been in the last three years. They've only lost three games. They've won like 38 games. So they know what it takes week to week to win football games. And my sense is that's where they're going to be here in 2015. It's going to be a week to week approach. Obviously, one of the big questions for Ohio State as they prepare for the season opener Labor Day night against Virginia Tech in Blacksburg is who will be quarterback? And you talked about quiet confidence. I think there's yeah. some quiet confidence in both Cardell Jones and JT Barrett that whichever one is the starter, the offense is going to be just fine. Yeah, I, I do sense that from both of those individuals for all the right reasons. They both have genuine experience. Cardale certainly not as much, but he was under the gun in the, the highest of profiles, of course, last year in the postseason. And, and JT has taken hundreds of snaps in game competition. So I love the quiet confidence. And I think that's also driven by not as much as the competition as to who's going to win it, Mark. I, I think very quietly the coaching staff has told both Cardale Jones and JT Barrett that, that fellows, we're going to use both of you more than you might believe this year. So they're both going to take a lot of snaps, but no question, one guy ultimately will be the starter. Obviously, when you think about Urban Meyer and using two quarterbacks, a lot of folks are going to bring up the Florida situation with Chris Leak and Tim Tebow. But what, what Urban Meyer's always said about that is that this is a different situation because Leak yeah. and Tebow had very different skill sets. Cardell Jones and JT Barrett, while not identical, they've got a lot of the same skill set, which is why I think the offense won't necessarily miss a beat regardless of who's in shotgun. That's an excellent point because I suspect what the coaching staff is looking to do is to avoid sort of a predictable situational thing uh, with those quarterbacks. We all know about Cardale's big arm, uh, but if if we see Cardale in obvious passing situations, that might become too predictable. So you're right, that's an important point to note, but I don't know that we're going to see a lot of situational substitutions uh, uh, with Jones and uh, with JT Barrett. The other thing about Cardale is we've seen him run the football, but he hasn't necessarily been the best uh, red zone running uh, quarterback with the football. So there are some questions yet to be answered about a possible quarterback rotation. And whoever is the quarterback for Ohio State, they will be throwing the ball to Braxton Miller as the fifth-year senior has made the switch to wide receiver, just one of many topics Urban Meyer addressed on at Media Day. Mike Weber had his black stripe taken off. Uh, he's a tough nut. He's a guy that uh, has been doing very well. I think he's only the second one. Isaiah Prince is the first one. Torrance is a guy that uh, we still haven't found our inside nine guy, we call him. He's the Devin Smith. He came to me. Uh, he realizes it's going to take at least a year to play quarterback here, especially with what's in front of him. And he said, I want to play. And I said, well, here's your options. Wildcat quarterback. Um, we'll see what your skill set is at receiver, catching the ball a little bit. Uh, he's a very good athlete. We put him back to returning kicks. Obviously, that wasn't live. so. I, I only think it's been a day or two, so for us to, you know, say he's the anointed one or he's this, he's that, he's a, a kid that runs around pretty fast and, and is a really good guy. I mean, he's a, a team first guy, which I really appreciate that, but is he moved a receiver? No. No, is he going to play? You know, remains to be seen. And that was kind of his, uh, came to me and said, I want to play, and he sees what's in front of him with Cardell and JT and, uh, and uh, so forth. Yeah, Urban, uh, uh Getting back to Torrance, but then the Braxton Miller deal. How, how's the Braxton Miller move going in your mind? He, uh, typical receiver. Uh, we've, you know, guys that go play receiver that haven't. It's like a guy, a uh, safety going to play corner. That doesn't happen very often. But basically, what a corner does in our defense, you line up, you tape your ankles, and you run for two hours of practice and play bump and run man coverage. 
As a receiver, you line up and you run for two hours. As a quarterback, you don't run. You run for maybe four or five minutes of practice, and you're doing other things. So he went through some, uh, you know, just muscle tightness. He's, he's fine, but we're being cautious. This is a big week for him. So we introduced him. He did very good, and uh, I'm anxious, to, as he is, to get going uh, and uh, get a starting spot. I don't know if you indicated this or if it was Ed Warner, but uh, are y'all going to be careful with him, though, also from a contact standpoint? Yeah. What's sort of that plan in a nutshell? Uh, yeah, we're just being cautious. You know, once again, he's a Braxton taking contact isn't an issue. You know, he's taken a lot of contact over his career, and, and we want to make sure that shoulder's healed. You know, we were going to run a double pass the other day, and I want to make sure that he's ready to go throw it too. So we're going to do uh, keep throwing him this week too, because that's going to be uh, you know like that weapon that can do that as well as what he can do. That's. I just, God forbid, all of a sudden he throws that darn thing and something happens. So I just want to make sure that he's ready. Big week for him. You mentioned the relationship between KT and Cardio. Yep. They both obviously want to start. We got to talk. They both <coughs> saying the phrase of each other. How unique is that to have a battle like that and yet they have that relationship? I think in your world it's not unique because people say those things and sometimes it's not genuine. This one's very genuine. And uh, because sometimes I'll see, and I've even, even witnessed it, where you know the guys are battling for a spot, and it's I hear that, but I don't see it. I mean, they're, they're, they really they encourage each other, they push each other. It's, it's unique. I think it's very unique. We did. We briefly talked about it, but that's uh, you know we we got we created a monster. You got to feed it. But then, no, I don't want to disappoint you, but really zero conversation about that. These team meetings, and I'd be disappointed to hear our players talk about anything other than Adolphus Washington worrying about the defensive line, and Von Bell and Tyvis worrying about that we have the best safeties in America. Eli and Garyon take care of the world. For Garyon and Eli to worry about something other than that, that's not fair. More importantly, for Coach Combs, Coach Johnson, Coach Ash, myself to worry about something is just, I mean, it doesn't exist. It, it probably exists when they are out and about. The good thing is they're locked down at the hotel with us. And so up until we play the first game, we're locked down. And Uh, it's it's tough. I mean, it's it's a freaking grind right now, man. And whether it's repeating or not, this is the same as our first year here. So, uh, at this point in time, there's not much balance, no. Uh, at, <laughs> but I, you know, I was going through some health, you know, my chest pains and all that. So I'm fine health-wise and take care of myself. But it is what it is. These next few weeks, man, there's not a whole lot of. I'm not playing Muirfield right now. I can promise you that. <laughs> Kind of left unsaid by that last question to Coach Meyer about finding that balance. I, I think you could read a lot into that long smile and grin he took that the balance issues, I think, are behind Coach Meyer. He has found that proper balance, and certainly the results have been there the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. But going back to the product on the field now, you mentioned the problems in the red zone at times under Cardell Jones mm -hmm. against both Oregon and Alabama. A lot of that's probably due to the quality of defense that Alabama yep. threw out there as well as Oregon. But Ezekiel Elliott and the way the offensive line came together the last half of the season, particularly the last three games, as Ezekiel Elliott almost rushed for 1,000 yards in just three games against three of the best teams in the country. That, I think, is, is another reason why you shouldn't be too concerned about who the quarterback is for Ohio State. That's exactly right. I, I suspect the final quarterback rushing totals, barring an unforeseen rash of injuries for the Buckeyes here in 2015, might be the lowest total for rushing quarterbacks that we've seen in quite some time. We all know about the, the veteran status with the returners, with the offensive line, but the depth and experience at running back, even beyond Ezekiel Elliott, gives uh, Ed Warner and 
Tim Beck and Coach Urban Meyer, a lot of options offensively, and and one of those lesser options is going to be to hang your quarterback out in dangerous situations. Four starters back on that offensive line. Chase Ferris is in line to become the new fifth starter, and it's been interesting the last couple of years the way Ed Warner has had to develop a fifth starter every year at the right tackle spot, and he's done a pretty good job of, of turning some diamonds into the, out of the rough. Yeah, he, he seems to have really an excellent uh, rapport with her play, his players. We've got that feedback over the years with, with Ed Warner and, and his – offensive lineman, but beyond that, he is also a big picture guy. He's been a very successful offensive coordinator uh, previously in his stops. He'll assume that role this year in a co-manner, so I think Ed Warner is quite comfortable with where his pieces are, and maybe this year with that veteran uh, front bunch with the offensive line, he can focus more on developing backups with the offensive line, which would be a plus that maybe we haven't seen in the in the three previous years with Urban Meyer. Yeah, Tom Herman, now the head coach at Houston, and you've got Stan Drayton now with the Chicago Bears. So Tim Beck takes over as quarterback's coach. Tony Alford, your new running back's coach. But as you kind of touch on, Ed Warner, now the offensive coordinator. Yep. We heard from Urban Meyer, it's not necessarily going to change play calling. It was always kind of a play calling by committee approach to begin with, but mm -hmm. there is a new dynamic on that coaching staff. No question. And I think the Tim Beck component will be quite interesting because everyone seemed to agree that even though at the end of the day, Urban Meyer makes the final call or he has the veto over play calls. A lot of people seem to agree that Tom Herman was a borderline genius and to some degree it had become Tom Herman's offense inside of Coach Meyer's offense. The Tim Beck personality is yet to be fully revealed both in terms of game situations and, and even through the camp here. He, he comes across pretty well and he's very experienced, so we'll see how that plays out. To me, that's going to be an interesting new aspect of Ohio State. It's really the only new coach. I think when you look at the Ohio State offense, you know what you got coming back to the offensive line. We've talked about the quarterbacks. We know how good Ezekiel Elliott is, and there looks like to be some good depth behind Ezekiel Elliott. One of the questions, though, obviously is wide receivers. With Devin Smith and Evan Spencer both graduated off to the NFL, who is going to be that long ball threat to step up and replace Devin Smith? That is an area of concern for Coach Meyer. You know, you want to think naturally guys like Michael Thomas, but that really hasn't been his game. Uh, maybe Corey Smith. We saw a little bit out of that with him in the postseason. Of course, he'll miss the Virginia Tech game. But I would say don't sleep on a kid from Indianapolis, Terry McLaurin, and don't sleep on a kid from Akron, Paris Campbell. They're the little bit smaller-sized receivers that can scoot down the field and get under the football, and that's what Devin Smith's uh, real calling card was. But you're right. That person, I think, has yet to surface. Certainly in game competition, it hasn't. And I look forward to that getting settled. We know Braxton Miller's got the speed to be that deep ball threat, but whether he can do the separation and make the adjustments in route and make the catches, we're going to have to wait and see. But I think one way that they're going to use Braxton Miller in the H-back role is going to be extremely effective is on those jet sweeps. Urban Meyer has always talked about wanting an offense that stretches the field both vertically and horizontally. He wants teams to have to defend the full sideline to sideline. And you get Braxton Miller on those sweeps, that's going to open up things in the center for Ezekiel Elliott to go up the middle, and that's also going to help keep stretch the field defensively. Oh, that's excellent, and that, that almost certainly is the case. If you want to know what Braxton Miller is going to do, remember what Jalen Marshall did last year. They're, they're virtual carbon copies, I think, a lot physically, and they both have a very similar background. Of course, Jalen hasn't played quarterback at the collegiate level, but he, he was very effective as that H-back. And you're right, getting Braxton Miller the ball in space where he can use his wheels, probably more important than seeing if he can catch the ball deep uh, downfield. Uh, Braxton's got the wheels we all know. To the outside observer, this has been a, a year of surprises concerning Braxton Miller, from the shoulder injury a little over a year ago yeah. to the decision to return to Ohio State to the decision to become a wide receiver. Those are things Braxton talked about to the media today on Media Day. I was going good, other than my legs being so sore. That's the only thing that was uh, the biggest difference from playing quarterback to playing uh, receiver. What's the biggest adjustment? Is it actually catching the ball, running routes? What's the biggest adjustment moving positions? Probably the biggest adjustment, you know, just going against somebody every play. You know, you know v Tech, they play man to man, so going against somebody in front of you every play, that's probably one of the main, the main thing that's uh, different from quarterback to receiver. I mean, it's it's fun. I mean, I've always been real close with Braxton, so to be able to be in the same room as him and, you know, be able to play and line up, possibly him lining up inside of me, and we're on the, same on the field at the same time together, side by side, is just, 
I mean, I feel I feel great, and I feel it's like a blessing, kind of like a dream come true, just to play with like a brother, you know, like a close friend. But he's been doing great, you know. Every day he's been making progress. I mean, it's it's at the beginning you want to transition, you want to see like how he's gonna do with contact and stuff, because over the summer we we're just doing drills. But he's just been making progress, and he's shown that he's dedicated. So sky's the limit for him at the position. Taking that year off last year and um, the things he overcame and did this offseason, like I said before, I never seen not just him, but a person worked that hard at getting back to where he want to be. So yeah, of course, he had the right to be excited. I have fun, man. You know, just having fun out there and just catching the ball and, and just already on the second or third level. Absolutely. All you got to do is make make one person miss and it's, you know, it's all to the races. Being that we're friends and we want the best for the team. And like I said, if it's, if it's not me, then I don't have a reason or Whatever, whatever it is to be mad at somebody, like, I'm not going to point the finger. I mean, that doesn't make sense. I didn't play well, so with me not playing well, I shouldn't play. You know what I'm saying? If somebody's playing better than me at playing quarterback, they should be playing. So um, I think that's my mindset. Uh, I think Cardell's is the same, uh, being that we talked about this before. So we want the best for the team, and uh, I think that's uh, something. And also, like I said, we're friends. We hang out all the time. Um, I'm constantly at Cardo's house. You know me and JT, we, we roommates. Camp roommates, so we, we talk every night. See how I did, how he did. He asked me how he did in practice. So I asked him, how did I do on that route, you know, versus man coverage and stuff like that. We just give each other tips. You know, it's just all fun. And it's uh, good to see them two guys have a competition at the quarterback position. My personal opinion, yes, hands down, because of the playmakers we got, because of the, um, because of the youth we got, because of the depth we got, and because of the experience we got. Yeah, plus I'm, I'm going to be in the backfield too. I was in the backfield a couple of times. I was with Cardell. Uh, and I was with JT yesterday actually doing a scrimmage in the backfield running uh, running back a little bit. Then I went to uh, wide out when Zeke came in. It's just fun, man. You know, this actually it's like playing a video game for you. Just put any, anybody anywhere. <laughs> you heard it from uh, Braxton. You heard it from Cardell Jones. It's like a video game out there. You look at a Torrance Gibson, a highly touted freshman quarterback who's going to be taking some snaps with the receivers. It's all about getting your best 11 on the field. And if that means having Torrance Gibson, Braxton Miller, JT Barrett, Cardell Jones, and Jalen Marshall, five quarterbacks all on the field at the same okay. time together, that's what Ohio State's going to do. You know, that sounds outlandish on paper and in spoken word. I don't think it's that ridiculous, quite frankly. And, and I think that's one of the embarrassment of riches offensively that this Ohio State team is going to face this year. They have so much capability with these different guys. And if you're deep across the board, or at least you have your best 11 on the field, then who does the defending 11 focus in on? I mean, if you, if you don't have that single guy to overplay, it eliminates chances for double teams. And any of the aforementioned guys in one-on-one -on -one situations are home run hitters. So Ohio State really has that embarrassment of riches offensively. It's all about how to utilize those pieces, Mark. Buckeyes talk about being nine units strong. The defensive units came on very strong at the end of last year. And if you look at who's returning defensively, I think the linebackers are going to be the strength of the silver bullet unit. You know what's interesting about the linebackers, and I think, I think you made this point earlier, and that is the experience with the backups at linebacker. We know all about Joshua Perry and, and Darren Lee and certainly Raekwon McMillan, who many suspect will take the next step. I don't know how he's going to take the next step. He was an all-star last year as a true freshman, but, but their experience with their backup linebackers and including an all-star cast of freshmen that have come on, the linebacking core was, was very shallow and not that effective as recent as two seasons ago. It's a complete game change for Ohio State with the linebackers. And, you know, they're, when you've got good linebackers, it just changes everything. It makes your secondary that much more effective potentially. And speaking of that secondary, we know Von Bell and Tyvis Pollard are back at safety. He's pretty strong there. Eli Apple is back at one cornerback, but they do have to replace Doran Graham. Yeah, and that's a big time. He's a, just a spectacular all-around athlete with speed, with ingenuity, with experience. He was a tremendous cover man, really a special kind of a player and a leader. It sounds as though you mentioned Gary and Conley will get a good look, but a lot of guys that are playmakers like Marshawn Lattimore and Damon Webb and, and a host of other guys, they just haven't seen the field on a regular basis. But as we've always known with Ohio State over the years, it's all about getting a chance to become known 
zone because we know you got the talent. So I don't think depth is really an issue in the secondary, uh, but but filling that one corner spot effectively is is a big question mark. Another question mark is at the defensive line. It's Michael Bennett and Steve Miller are both graduated. Joey Boza will miss the Virginia Tech game because of a team violation of team rules and a suspension. So the question is, who's going to be able to step up on the defensive line? I think it's very similar to the secondary where there's some guys who have been highly touted, but just a question of whether or not their production on the field can match the, the preps off the field. I'll tell you, there are some guys that are tremendous physical specimens. Uh, Taekwon Lewis, we've seen some of him already, and he apparently was making genuine progress before the, the Boza episode. Jalen Holmes, a young fellow from uh, Virginia, in fact, surely passes the look test, and I think he's poised to step up. And the, the much-talked-about five-star overall athlete who's now settled in at defensive line, Sam Hubbard, young guy from Cincinnati who uh, is really turning heads. So I think it's not going to take long for the Ohio State defensive line to to fill in those blanks. And uh, I suspect that losing uh, Joey Boza for the first game It'll blip them a little bit, but they've had plenty of time to prepare. And Sam Hubbard has had plenty of time now to prepare as a defensive lineman. As Mike mentioned, he came in as a linebacker, but he's now made that sh switch, that transformation complete as a D lineman. I would say I'm pretty quick, still have some mostly quickness from uh, when I was linebacker safety, even though I gained a couple pounds. But uh, yeah, speed, quickness off the ball, and uh, you know, intensity and just being relentless to, to get to the quarterback and uh, never giving up on a play, I think that's what I bring to the table. We just all feel like we got pressure from ourselves to, you know, elevate our game to be a better player than we was last year. And we lost great players like Steve Miller. He was a, he was a great leader. Rashad Frazier, they was great leaders. So, you know, it's always hard to replace great leaders, but, you know, we, we got to be just as good, if not better, or, you know, it's a fail. But I feel like that we all stepping up to the challenge. Uh, we got a focused team, but I would say one thing that we haven't done is, is uh, we're not too uptight. You know, we, we, they say that, you know, you win one and then everybody tightens up. And um, we're trying not to do that right now. We want to be able to do the same things that we did last year, just kind of go out there and, and really enjoy what we're doing. Uh, I mean, our mindset is we want to take things up a notch and even uh, put even more aggression, you know, on our defense and just, you know, really start to attack people. Uh, because we're way more comfortable in the defense now. You can just see it in practice, just the way people are communicating and all that stuff. So we feel as a backfield, we feel as a defense that we can uh, start really setting some crazy records and doing some uh, good stuff. Well, last year we were supposed to be the best. This year we're going to try to be the best secondary in not just the Big Ten, but in the nation. That's always been the goal. That's going to always be the goal. We're going to be very aggressive and try to get lead the nation in takeaways is our number one goal. It's, it's definitely a stacked unit. I knew that coming in, but um, I think it's it was something that I chose. I wanted to learn from guys like Darren Lee. You know, those are just freaks of nature. Guys like Josh Perry that does everything right. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely paying off for me. I'm learning a lot because jo Josh Perry is my big brother right now. He's helping me get through a lot of stuff and learn some of the defense and I guess Paying off, I mean, be, being around that much of talent, you know, is going to make me better for the long run. So in, in my place, I think I have to be patient with it and um, I guess wait for my time and just keep learning from the older guys. Well, once again, Urban Meyer reeled in a highly touted recruiting class. A lot of big freshmen, Mike Weber, the running back out of Detroit, he was the second freshman to get the black stripe removed from his helmet, signifying a true Buckeye. And the offensive linemen, a lot of young offensive linemen, a lot of freshmen on this team. I don't know if any of those linemen on the offensive side will make an impact as freshmen. I think Mike Weber could make an impact as a freshman. What other mm -hmm. freshmen do you think will make an impact this year? Well, you know, you talk about offensive line, and, and that's a difficult transition to make from high school to college. But they are all-star guys, uh, so I wouldn't discount it necessarily. They're not going to immediately step in. But if you can get inside the two deep, I think you're pretty strong right off the bat. We mentioned a little bit earlier some of these linebackers are really something. Uh, Justin Hilliard, uh, Jerome Baker, even Nick Connor, local fellow here from Central Ohio, came in early, made an impression in the spring game. So I wouldn't sleep on the linebackers. And, you know, beyond that, the secondary is pretty, pretty deep with guys. I'm not sure who's going to make an impact there. And the other big names, of course, are the are the two quarterbacks, uh, Joey Burrow from uh, from Athens and 
and Torrance Gibson out of uh, South Florida, who uh, may be going to get a chance to play, but at a different position, right? Yeah, absolutely. Gibson, as Coach Meyer talked about, uh, made the decision to switch to a wide receiver. He also might return a little kicks because he wanted to get on the field this year. And as Urban Meyer has said yeah. in the past, if you've got a five-star, really good recruit, he's not going to be here five years. So mm -hmm. th there's no point in redshirting them. Let's get him on the field. Let's get them to play. Well, for the first time since 2012, there is a West Central Ohioan back on the Ohio football team as Blake Fenning from Wapakoneta is a walk-on offensive lineman. We had a chance to catch up with the big Wapakoneta native as he gets the ready to take on college football. Um, just maintaining with the pace of this game, it, it's it's much different than high school, and uh, you know just uh, trying to keep a focus on what needs to be done. Great kid, hard worker. We're excited that he's here. Love his family. So it was good. It was good to he came down on some you know an unofficial visit, spent some time together, and he wanted to be a Buckeye, and we opened the doors, and we're excited he's here. I've been told to uh, be practicing right guard. But, you know, um, keeping the opportunity open for any other positions is fine. Certainly it will be interesting to see how Blake Fenning progresses at Ohio State. And, of course, Ohio State has received a verbal acceptance from Gavin Cup from Lipsick to become a lineman at the Buckeyes. Of course, he's got a senior year at Lipsick to go. Let's take a look at the rest of the Big Ten, Mike. And, obviously, it starts with the East, as Michigan State uh, perhaps will be even better than they were last year. Certainly, offensively, they look to be a little bit better. They might have lost a little bit too much defensively. Mm -hmm. But the Big Ten's Eastern Division appears to be the cream of the crop of the conference. There's no question. Many believe it's as good a division in all of college football. Obviously, others would argue the point. But uh, I think it's going to be better than it was last year. And that's sort of scary for the Buckeyes. Fortunately, the Buckeyes face uh, a very talented Michigan State team with their all-star quarterback, Connor Cook, back. They need to find a running back, uh, but they do have a lot of their top defenders uh, returning. So look for Michigan State to come rolling into Columbus in late November uh, to be a real factor. How can Penn State not improve? They weren't that far off last year. For them, it's all about just replenishing their depth. They've got the veteran quarterback, and they've got some pretty good linebackers also at Penn State. Obviously, the Wolverines, you have to consider them an improved situation. Their coaching issues have been settled with, with Coach Harbaugh, but they've got some real issues at quarterback that we'll know more about when they play Utah the open this season. But Michigan is Michigan, and I don't think Brady Hoke left the cupboard that bare, actually, that Coach Harbaugh may benefit from that a, a little bit. You know, and the rest of the East are, are guys that are under the gun to improve. Uh, Indiana needs to improve uh, for Coach Wilson. The uh, the Illini certainly need to improve uh, for Coach Beckman. And, and I, I'm a big Daryl Hazel fan. I think Purdue, frankly, is going to be better also. Any concern about the Far East portion of the Big Ten East in Maryland and Rutgers? Not a whole lot. You know, I think Maryland had a pretty good recruiting year, and they returned quite a few guys. They have a little bit of a question at the quarterback. I don't know Rutgers can't necessarily – I don't know that Rutgers will take a step back. The question is, will the competition allow Rutgers to take a step forward? So I'm not that overly concerned about the teams on the Far East. They've never historically been that good. I don't think they've been in the Big Ten long enough to maybe elevate themselves where they need to be. You mentioned Purdue and Illinois. They're expected to be towards the bottom of the Big Ten West. Obviously, if things go right for Ohio State, they win the Big Ten East and take on the Big Ten West champion mm -hmm. in the Big Ten championship game in Indianapolis. Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Nebraska, who do you see coming out of the Big Ten West? All four potentially pretty good football teams. Minnesota will get tested early. They need to find a running back, but they have quite a few returners for Coach uh, Jerry Kill. Uh, Iowa is another team that has quite a few returners. I respect them a lot. And I think Wisconsin's going to have a pretty easy transition with Coach Paul Christ. He comes from there. Joel Stavi is back. They've got an excellent running back in, in Clement and Corey Clement. They need to actually establish their offensive line I understand now to me Nebraska is a big question mark and uh, I, I don't know a lot about what the Cornhuskers have going their, their change is as big as any because because uh, coach Pelini was very deeply involved and was there a long long time I would say amongst those threes with the usual uh, expectations Wisconsin or Minnesota would be my picks at this hour all right and we're three weeks away from the Buckeyes season opener against Virginia Tech in Blacksburg 
course, don't forget that is going to be a Labor Day, a Monday night game on the road for Ohio State. First time they've opened up on the road in quite some time. That's going to do it for us tonight on the Buckeye Insider Special, but we'll have much more on the Virginia Tech game coming up in the weeks ahead as once again we'll be on board with weekly Buckeye Insiders both Tuesday nights and WTLW and Sunday mornings on a WOSN and plenty of content available online at our YouTube channel, the Buckeye Insider 2015 playlist on WOSN Sports. For Mike Miller, I'm Mark Kuntz. We'll see you next time on Buckeye Insider.